Hi, it's Katrina. From a pirate ship laden with coins and gold to an ancient burial site with hundreds of pieces of jewelry and weapons, here are 10 amazing recently discovered archaeological treasures. Number 10. Pirate Shipwreck English pirate Captain Sam Bellamy, better known as Black Sam, was reportedly the wealthiest pirate in recorded history. He operated during the early 18th century, capturing as many as 54 ships in just a little over a year with the help of his crew. His ship, the Wida, was carrying the cargo and valuables of all of these ships and it is unknown how much treasure was actually on board. Nicknamed the Prince of Pirates, Black Sam had a reputation for being unusually merciful and even generous to his captives. Additionally, he was known for his racially diverse crew, which included African American and formerly enslaved members. In an interview with As It Happens host Carol Off, underwater archaeologist Barry Clifford explained that everyone had the opportunity to vote and was entitled to a share of any treasure seized. Black Sam was more or less a real-life Robin Hood of the seas, with an admirable sense of justice and equality, along with a disdain for corruption and those who stole from the poor. The Wida was wrecked in a storm in 1717 and the man's body was never recovered, until now. In 1982, archaeologists discovered the treasure-laden Wida off the Cape Cod coast. Now they believe they have found the skeletons of six pirates, perhaps including Black Sam himself. Archaeologists are now more excited about studying the bones than the treasure. The bones are encased inside hardened masses called concretions full of other objects like spoons, bronze weapons, and other bits and pieces. Experts plan to try removing them for further analysis, including DNA testing, in a mission to match the genetic information to a living descendant of Bellamy's, whom they obtained a DNA sample from in 2018. If we found Bellamy, we would return him to his local graveyard, said Clifford, adding his town would be extremely excited about that. Out of 140 pirates who died aboard the Wida, 102 washed ashore. Clifford, who led the dive that originally discovered the wreck, believes dozens of men may have been aboard the ship when it flipped and sank. The pirate himself has now become the treasure. Number 9. Vindolanda Collection Vindolanda was a Roman auxiliary fort near Hadrian's Wall in Northumberland. Located at the edge of the Roman Empire, it guarded the Stain Gate, a major highway that led to Caledonia. The timber and stone forts at Vindolanda were rebuilt at least nine times, creating one of the most complex archaeological sites in Britain. Vindolanda is full of archaeological artifacts and is famous for having the largest Roman leather shoe and boot collection ever discovered in the UK. In addition to footwear, archaeologists have unearthed over 7,000 objects, including large numbers of tent panels, decorative embellishments, horse gear, leather scraps, and more. While searching through a collection of hundreds of scraps during lockdown in 2020, researchers found one that was cut into the shape of a mouse. Measuring 4.8 inches by 1 inch long, the cutout creature has knife slits marking its eyes and fur. It dates back to sometime between 105 and 130 AD and was likely either a child's toy or perhaps even used for a practical joke. One of the most wonderful things about the Vindolanda collection is that we never know what we are going to find next, said Vindolanda Trust curator Barbara Bailey when explaining the site's immense archaeological value. The Vindolanda tablets are, quite arguably, the site's most remarkable discovery. Found preserved near the floors of the buried wooden forts, they are Britain's oldest known surviving handwritten documents. They provide a rare glimpse into the daily goings-on at Vindolanda 2,000 years ago, including the private and military lives of its residents. Several of the tablets, which discuss everyday matters like birthday cards and underwear, are on display at the Roman Vindolanda Fort and Museum, located at the original site. And now for number 8, but first want to say a big thank you to KFC lovers and JC who is a new subscriber. Welcome! If you are new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button and join us. Number 8. Pompeii's Treasures Earlier this year, the Antiquarium Museum reopened for the first time in over 40 years. Housing some of Pompeii's best preserved artifacts, including protective amulets and plaster casts of victims of the infamous eruption, the Antiquarium is an introduction to the site, told through the most significant artifacts of the ancient city, from the Samnite era to the tragic eruption of 79 AD. 
Here, visitors can see all kinds of things, including frescoes, graffiti, and bronze and marble statues, and everyday objects such as tableware and a bronze food warmer. You can step right into the past. Speaking to the Associated Press, Pompeii Archaeological Park Director Massimo Osana said, I find particularly touching the last room, the one dedicated to the eruption, and where on display are the objects deformed by the heat of the eruption, the casts of the victims, and the casts of the animals. The antiquarium first opened in 1873, but was partially destroyed by bombs and lost several of its artifacts during World War II. Five years later, in 1948, the museum reopened, but it was once again closed following the 1980 Irpinia earthquake. Exhibits began reopening in 2016, but the museum was finally fully reopened in January. Here, tourists can finally see some of the significant artifacts that sat in secured storage facilities for years and which constitute some of the site's most important artifacts. Number 7. Mary Queen of Scots Pomander Mary Queen of Scots is perhaps best known for being beheaded for plotting to kill Queen Elizabeth I. Born into royalty, Mary inherited the Scottish throne at just six days old in 1542 upon her father's death. Her entire life was marked by controversy and suspicious ties to violence. She was married twice, in 1558 and 1565, and each husband died within a year or two after marrying. Mary's second husband, her English cousin Lord Darnley, was killed in an explosion, and her lover, the Earl of Bothwell, was the suspected culprit. Bothwell was acquitted, and Mary went on to marry him that same year. The nobility was outraged, and Mary tried, but failed, to bring an army against them with the goal of murdering Queen Elizabeth I to take her rightful place as the Catholic Queen. She was subsequently imprisoned and was executed 19 years later in 1586. This silver pomander or perfume container reportedly belonged to Mary, Queen of Scots. Measuring just 1.6 inches by 1 inch, the vessel is attached to a chain and consists of a spherical silver body and eight segments bearing intricate motifs. The eight parts have hinges that open to reveal a container with an attached chain. Inside would be ambergris, a waxy substance produced by sperm whales mixed with flowers and spices believed to protect the wearer from infections and bad smells. The artifact is now property of the Royal Collection Trust. Number 6. Isle of Man Viking Artifacts While treasure hunting on the Isle of Man, a self-governing British dependency between the UK and Ireland, retired police officer and amateur metal detectorist Kath Giles discovered a collection of Viking artifacts dating back over 1,000 years. The fascinating find was declared national treasure and included a gold arm ring, a large silver brooch, a silver armband, and many more items. Giles discovered the items, which are thought to have been buried around 950 AD on private land last year. She knew straight away that she had found something significant. She gave an interview to The Guardian and said, I'm so thrilled to have found artifacts that are not only so important, but so beautiful. In accordance with the 2017 Isle of Man Treasure Act, Giles contacted the Manx National Heritage Museum to report the find. Alison Fox, the museum's curator for archaeology, was pretty excited and said that the arm ring is a rare find. She says that gold items were not very common during the Viking Age. Silver was by far the more common metal for trading and displaying wealth. It has been estimated that gold was worth 10 times the value of silver and that this arm ring could have been the equivalent of 900 silver coins. At the time the artifacts were buried, the Isle of Man was an important economic and trading area. Now it's famous for motorcycle races and the Manx cat, the one that has no tail. Experts are working on determining the discovery's value, and Giles will receive a share as a reward. Number 5. Anglo-Saxon Cemetery and Treasure While conducting routine excavations ahead of the construction of a new housing development in Northamptonshire, England, Archaeologists from the Museum of London Archaeology recently discovered a large Anglo-Saxon burial site dating back roughly 1,500 years. It contains 154 graves filled with around 3,000 items, ranging from weapons to jewelry. There was treasure and graves everywhere. It's the biggest Anglo-Saxon cemetery ever found in Northamptonshire, according to a statement from project manager and archaeologist Simon Marcus. In his words, it is rare to find both an Anglo-Saxon settlement and a cemetery in a single excavation. The burial site is located near a settlement containing 42 structures, also around 1,500 years old. 
Life Science reported that the grave goods consist of around 150 brooches, 15 rings, 2,000 beads, 25 spears, 40 knives, and 15 shields. Perhaps most important was the discovery of cloth textiles, which actually almost never survived time, but in this case the metal objects nearby had caused them to mineralize. Nearby, researchers also found a 4,000-year-old Bronze Age cemetery containing 46 prehistoric burials, three burial mounds, and four buildings. Marcus explained that the discoveries will teach researchers about the everyday lives of both Anglo-Saxon people and Bronze Age residents, including their diets and health, as well as these ancient society's origins. Number 4. Ancient Roman Shipwreck Earlier this year, archaeologists announced the discovery of a rare Roman shipwreck off the Greek island of Kassos. Situated along a major ancient maritime trade route between Crete and Karpathos, Kassos is the southernmost Greek island in the Aegean Sea and was once home to Minoan and Mycenaean cultures. Dating back to sometime between 200 and 300 AD, the newly discovered Roman vessel is loaded with ceramic amphorae that were produced in modern-day Tunisia and Spain, and which were likely once filled with oil, according to a statement from the Greek Ministry of Culture and Sports. The discovery was made as part of the ongoing Casos Maritime Archaeological Project, which has spent the last three years focusing on finding, recording, and studying submerged artifacts around Casos. A team of 23 scientists and technicians conducted over 100 dives in the enormous investigation of the vessel, logging over 200 hours of diving time. In addition to the Roman ship, the team identified three other ancient shipwrecks, including one laden with Hellenistic-era amphorae, dating back to roughly the 1st century BC. Another, even older shipwreck dated back to the 5th century BC, while the third capsized vessel is from modern times. This place was kind of dangerous. Number 3. Hoxney Hoard Back in 1992, retiree and metal detectorist Eric Laws went treasure hunting in Hoxney Village, Suffolk, England. He was searching for a lost hammer, but quickly discovered what came to be known as the largest ever cache of Roman treasure ever found in Britain. Known as the Hoxney Hoard, it contained at least 60 pounds of gold and silver objects, which archaeologists removed from the site by the shovelful. The artifacts included over 15,000 Roman coins, 200 gold objects, and dozens of silver spoons, according to Smithsonian Magazine. Laws and the landowner received generous seven-figure payouts for the find. Meanwhile, experts gleaned invaluable insight during the island's turbulent separation from the Roman Empire around 410 AD. During the late 4th century, British Roman subjects lost the empire's protection, leading to a period of mass hoarding among citizens in an effort to protect their belongings from raiding forces. In trying to answer questions about exactly what prompted wealthy Romano-British families to bury their treasures in such high quantities, experts referenced the age of the Hoxney Hoard's coins. They initially determined that the cache was buried sometime in 408 or 409 AD, but later findings suggest that the coins continued to circulate for decades after the Roman Empire withdrew its influence from the region. Nearly all the Hoxney Hoard coins are clipped by up to one-third, with the excess material likely being used to make imitation coins. This indicates that the Roman Emperor was no longer supplying Britain with new coins, according to Roman archaeologist Peter Guest, who spoke with Smithsonian Magazine. Another expert, archaeologist Catherine Johns, alleges that the family who owned the Hoxney Hoard attached sentimental value to its items and even used them before carefully burying them, indicating that the items were not hidden under duress like they would be during a time of turmoil. Regardless of when the Hoxney Hoard was buried, which remains disputed to this day, there is one thing researchers can agree on. It's one of the most valuable and telling Roman-era treasure collections ever found in the world. Number 2. Cave of the Jaguar God In 2018, archaeologists from Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History accidentally discovered a sealed cave full of treasure amid a maze of dark tunnels on the Yucatan Peninsula. The hoard was found in Balamku, or the Jaguar God, a series of seven sacred chambers beneath the ruins of Chichen Itza, a Maya city that thrived between the 9th and 13th centuries AD, during which time it reached a peak population of millions. Within the cave, the team identified over 150 artifacts, including vases, incense burners, and decorative plates bearing the faces of gods and religious icons. According to an official statement released by Inna, archaeologists believe that the objects were untouched for over 1,000 years prior to the discovery. Well, for the most part. In 1966, archaeologist Victor Segovia Pinto recorded but did not excavate its contents. 
He then commissioned local farmers to seal the cavern's entrance for reasons that are unknown to this day, and his records conveniently went missing. Until recent decades, archaeologists were primarily interested in monumental archaeology rather than cave archaeology. Although the significance of such sites long went unrecognized, modern researchers are lucky to have the opportunity to examine the recently discovered objects in their undisturbed state. Through these artifacts, they hope to learn more about the mysterious Maya collapse, which some scholars believe was triggered by a series of catastrophic droughts. Number 1. Anglo-Saxon Find of the Century in what's being hailed as one of the most exciting finds of Anglo-Saxon archaeology since the 19th century, an early medieval cemetery containing over 60 graves was recently discovered beneath student housing at Cambridge University. The burials were found earlier this year amid the demolition of several 1930s-era buildings, with plans to build more modern amenities. Archaeologists uncovered hundreds of items in the graves dating back to the early Anglo-Saxon period between 400 and 650 AD, including bead necklaces, bronze brooches, swords, short blades, pottery, glass flasks, and more, according to The Guardian. Additionally, the team found evidence of Iron Age and Roman structures. The site's human remains were well-preserved because of the alkaline soil that helped to prevent them from decomposing, according to Dr. Caroline Goodson, an early medieval history professor at King's College. Archaeologists will likely be able to examine the bones using modern technology, hopefully gleaning DNA and more information about the dead's lives. By examining genetic information, researchers can learn about their family relationships and migration history. These findings fly in the face of Bede's ecclesiastical history, an 8th century text claiming that Cambridge was abandoned during the 5th century. What instead happened, according to Goodson, is that the area was mostly abandoned, with post-Roman settlements emerging thereafter, populated by both earlier Roman residents and recently arrived migrants. And she said they lived, ate, dressed, and utilized the land differently than the Romans did. The people at that time seemed to have been buried with objects the Romans left behind, meaning they must have had some sort of emotional connection with them. Thanks for watching! Remember to subscribe if you're new here, and I'll see you soon for more amazing discoveries! Bye!